On May 22, 1912, First Lieutenant Alfred Cunningham reported to Annapolis, Maryland for duty in connection with aviation, marking the birth of Marine Corps aviation. Legendary Marines including Roy Geiger, Joe Foss, Keith McCutcheon, Pappy Boyington, Frank Peterson, John Glenn, and Charlie Bolden, and countless others have further enhanced Cunningham's achievements with their innovation and imagination. As we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, the past 100 years provide a remarkable legacy of the Marine Air Ground Team. On behalf of all who wear the Eagle Globe and Anchor, thank you for your support of Marine Aviation during this past year's Marine Aviation Centennial. Semper Fidelis. It makes me very proud to think of where we've come from uh, because we do it well and we do it right. We have to be good on the land, we have to be good in the air, and we have to be good in the sea. You lose aviation, it's like cutting off your leg. We're all one force and uh, we as aviation, um, we, we serve to support the ground forces. It all started with uh, Alfred A. Cunningham, Marine Corps Aviator Number 1, who was trained alongside the Navy aviators, and he understood uh, from a very early point the best uh, utility for any aviation unit was uh, its applicability in uh, supporting the, the, the ground ski maneuver. Going back throughout our centuries of, of history, we've had that, that ground warfighter on the front doing a frontal attack. Aviation brings a whole new dynamic here. In World War I, uh, I think we, as a Marine Corps, were still trying to feel out what aviation can do for our forces. Uh, the gear that they were flying in, um, it, it, it's just, it's absolutely amazing to me. And to think that we have come that far in 100 years is phenomenal. We work, we train, and we fight as one Marine team. We understand each other, and in combat, that is something that is just invaluable. Gregory Boyington, better known as Pappy. He wrote a memorable saga in aerial combat in the South Pacific in World War II. There were few fighter pilots who did not know his name and the daring of Major Pappy Boyington, famous Marine ace. Pappy was one kill short of the record held jointly by Marine Corps buddy Joe Foss and Eddie Rickenbacker of World War I fame. Since 1942, I've been a well-known character because I, in 1942, was the year that I became a uh, Marine ace. An ace is someone that's knocked down five enemy aircraft. Korea was tough. The weather would come down from Mongolia. I've never been so cold in my life. So it was the, the first Marine Air Wing that provided around-the-clock coverage to assist the Marines and provided continuous uh, close air support and coverage to the, uh, uh, to the withdrawal. And in fact, on one of those missions, a uh, flight of MiGs jumped us, shot up on the airplane fairly badly. Here I was, just turned 21, and flying combat missions, being awarded Distinguished Flying Cross, and of course the air medals that went along with those particular missions. It was a abrupt change from a young Kansas farm boy to all of a sudden being a 21-year-old second lieutenant with a distinguished flying cross and combat missions under his belt. 
Major John Glenn came back to combat to fly 90 missions to shoot down three MiGs. Following Korea, John Glenn came home, answered the president's call. John Glenn, throughout his life, has eloquently portrayed these great qualities and is an inspiration to all Americans. Godspeed, John Glenn. Well, the use of helicopters uh, certainly had been introduced during the Korean War. Uh, it was in Vietnam uh, and the uh, operating in a jungle-type environment where the, uh, the real utility uh, of using uh, helicopters as a form of troop movement and uh, resupply uh, really became understood uh, for, uh, for how valuable and important uh, that was uh, for Marine Corps-type operations. In Vietnam, as in past conflicts, uh, Marine aviation provided the six functions of Marine aviation, commanding of aircraft and missiles, assault support, offensive air support, anti-air warfare, electronic warfare and air reconnaissance. Uh, helicopters in Vietnam played a large role in uh, terms of assault support. Marine aviation is different than any other service. For us to be able to experience and live like we do with those individuals on the ground is just such a benefit for us. Uh, we do it so much better uh, for that simple reason. As an infantryman, when you've been in combat now for 10 to 12 hours and not knowing how long it was going to be before those casualties were going to be evacuated, hearing the sound of the rotor blades, you knew that those pilots were going to do what it took to get the casualties out. It gives that commander a little bit more um, uh, confidence uh, that he or she is going to be able to, to go forward and, um, and fight the enemy knowing they have you know, Marine Air above, ready, and willing to come at any time. thinking there is no way on the planet I would want to be in that zone with all those bullets flying around. There's absolutely no way. Um, and, and, and when I talked to those guys, the very first thing they said to me was, sir, you're crazy. There is no way I would have flown into that LZ. There's no way. Marine aviation exists solely to support the infantrymen on the ground. If we live and die by that, we are never going to go wrong. It gives us the marching orders that we think about every day when we go fly. I felt very, very good knowing that I had Marine aviators working with us, planning with us. Uh, my brothers, my sisters, Marines, on the ground. We were going to be just fine. 